David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University. Talk about CE3303 solids. This is part two of video on 3D combined loadings. Part one was about the statics, getting the internal forces. And so we're going to pick up where that left off and uh, figure out the stresses at this point A on the top of this solid circular rod. Okay, now remember we have three forces and three moments. The forces are one axial tension and two transverse shears in the x in the y and the z direction. The three moments are one torsion, which is moment about the longitudinal axis, which in this case is the x axis, plus two bending moments about the y and the z axis. So, we need to analyze, we want to know the stresses at point A. So first we need to compute some section properties. I've assumed that this thing is a one inch diameter rod. So the area is this, 0.785 inches squared. I need the moment of inertia right there. The polar moment of inertia, J. And then at this point Q, at this point A, I need to know Q for the transverse shear. So, point A is going to have the maximum amount of transverse shear for the force VZ, the reaction, the shear in the Z direction. So, Q is the area away from the neutral axis. In this case, A lies on the neutral axis. And times it's that area away from the neutral axis at the point where you're trying to figure the stress times the distance from the centroid of that area to the neutral axis. So I have to look in a book to get this centroid area because I know I can figure the area just half of the area up here one half of pi over 4 d squared. So what I need is that y bar distance from the centroid of a semicircle to its base. Everything's turned on its side now. That is 4r over 3 pi, y bar. So y bar is equal to 4 times 0.5, the radius, divided by 3 pi, 0.212 inches. I multiply those two together to get q. y bar times a is, so q is 0 0.0833 at point a for shear in the z direction. Okay, now I'm ready to compute my stresses. At point A, the axial stress is P over A. Well, P is this longitudinal force, axial force. It's in tension. And so, P over A is just 95.5 PSI. It's in tension. Transverse shear, which we were just talking about, for shear in the Y direction, A lies up there on the extreme edge of it, the extreme fiber as we call it. So, as I've shown here, Q is equal to zero, so the shear stress due to shear in the Y direction is zero. But for shear in the Z direction, it's lying on the neutral axis, so it's the point of maximum shear. So it's just VQ over IT. These are the numbers. The shear in the Z direction is this 100 pounds. Q, I, and T is that thickness of the thing, which is the diameter at the place where I'm taking this, the stress. It works out to be 170 PSI in the Z direction. This is, we'll see, ZX or XZ shear. The torque, so I'm, I'm through with now all my straight line forces, FY, FZ, FY, FX, and FZ. And so now I'm ready to talk about my moments, of which I have the one torsion. Shear stress due to that is T rho over J. There's the numbers, it works out to be 1220 PSI. At this point, because my torsion is this way, my shear stress is going to be in the Z direction. So, I have to look at that as um, additive to this other shear stress. We'll see that down here. So, I have two moments that create bending. Uh, the bending about the y-axis at point A, since it lies on the neutral axis, which is the y-axis, the shear stress, the bending stress at the neutral axis is 
zero. So I don't have to worry about that. But for bending about the Z axis, A is the extreme fiber, and so I just go to the formula MY over I, and everything's in inches and pounds, so the units work out. 640 inch pounds was my moment about the bending moment about the Z axis, times Y, which is distance from the neutral axis to the point where I'm trying to figure the bending stress divided by I works out to be 6570 PSI really a big number you can see that a, a circle is not a very efficient shape for bending because most of its area is is uh, grouped towards the center towards the neutral axis and you have very little away from the neutral axis so a circle is really not very good in bending as evidenced by that high stress Okay, now you want to show this on a stress block. I really need two of them because I have three-dimensional stresses. Let's look at the Y, X, um, two dimensions. Um, sigma Y is zero. And my shear stress in the Y direction, tau X, Y, is zero. From this up here, my transverse shear is zero. All I have is axial stress, which this x direction is really the longitudinal direction, and I have the tension due to the axial stress, force, 75 pounds, plus the bending stress, these are the normal stresses to, to the surface, going in or out of the surface, it's cut right there, so it's just 95.5 plus 65.70, 66.70 psi in tension. Now I want to rotate and look at the X, Z, little section through X and Z, so it's like cutting down this way. And <clears throat> once again, I have no axial stress in the Z direction, and I have the same axial stress, 6670 PSI, it's tension, of course, like that one. My shear stress, I've got two components of it, one due to torque and one due to straight line transverse shear. So that's 170 plus 1220 or 1390 PSI.